Barry, you lead off your pass catchers love list with two of the most impressive rookies in football last year, Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson. Both guys obviously are getting or got or are getting new quarterbacks for next year. And that's the thing. I mean, like whatever you think of Derek Carr as a quarterback fantasy wise in the NFL, what he can do really well is he can throw the deep ball, right? Top five last year in terms of deep ball rate and deep completions. In fact, that's over the last two seasons. And so, um, you know, we saw like Obviously, Devonta Adams had huge numbers with him as well. We've seen Darren Waller put up big numbers with Derek Carr as his guy. Hunter Renfro became a thing. So Chris Olave, who's just phenomenally talented, like, you know, and was putting oh, up yeah. numbers with Andy Dalton. Oh, yeah. I think we all agree Derek Carr is an upgrade over Andy Dalton, over Jameis Winston. And so second year for Olave. We don't know what's going on with uh, Michael Thomas either. Olave is going to be the uh, the lead wide receiver of this offense. And I think he's a borderline top 10 wide receiver next and year. And this too, Derek Carr, who was quarterback 17 last year, which that ain't good, but it didn't matter because Devontae Adams was still a top three to five fantasy option at receiver. So, and that person now will be Chris Olave. They're going to chuck it deep and they're going to chuck it deep to Olave and Derek Carr can do that. And then you asked me about Garrett Wilson. Look, the expectation here is that Aaron Rodgers becomes the New York Jets starting quarterback. And it's just a matter of when. And so getting Aaron Rodgers, so I'm cheating a little bit because as of the time I'm writing this column, he doesn't really have a quarterback. But the expectation is he's going to get Rodgers. He loses Elijah Moore, so there's a little, you know, Elijah Moore goes to Cleveland. So there's slightly less target competition, but whatever. I'm not worried about Alan Lazard. Garrett Wilson's really, really good. He's about to get a massive upgrade at quarterback. Yeah. Jay, next up on the list was K.J. Osborne. And with him, when you look at Minnesota losing Adam Thielen, and Thielen and Irv Smith, they leave 143 more targets in this offense. There was times where Osborne had some pretty big weeks last year. Now it seems like more opportunity will be on the table, even if Minnesota adds a wide receiver in the draft. Yeah, well, he had those two massive games against the Giants and the Bears where he was over uh, 100 yards. Sorry, against the Colts and the Bears. Yeah. Uh, and also he sprinkled in some other big games too, and now with Thielen gone. Now, Hawkinson being there for a full season might take away a little bit, but I think with how much that team throws the ball and the attention that Jefferson gets, Osborne should definitely be a viable fantasy guy next season. And you've, if you've heard Kirk Cousins talk about Osborne, yep. it's in glowing terms. And then you brought up Hawkinson as well. He made the love list too. Uh, finishes last year as tight end four in points per game with 12.7. And Barry, it felt like, I mean, obviously, it's just, there's just more for him in that offense than how the Lions use their tight end. So kind of a big year for Hawkinson going into the next season. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, Irv Smith also gone from the team. Like, yeah. Not a huge name, but the fact of the matter is, is that, right, every tight end snap is really going to go to TJ Hawkinson, every tight end snap that we care about. And so with no feeling in the middle of the field, Osborne, you know, uh, feels like the middle of the field is much more now with Thielen and Herb Smith gone. Osborne can, can take some deep routes. So my expectation here is that just, I think, a massive target share at a fairly thin position in terms of tight end is coming TJ Hawkinson's way. Lawrence, this is a fun one. Jamison Williams, obviously we knew he was going to be rehabbing to kick off last mm. season. Now DJ Chark leaves Detroit. This is Jamison Williams' deep threat role in an offense where Jared Goff ranked top five in completion rate on deep passes. This is an offense that can throw the ball down the field, and they got a premier deep target that's healthy. Yeah, and this is good. Jamison Williams is going to be a guy, when they come around to do your drafts and redraft leagues, he's going to be that deep sleeper like, you know, maybe some people thought, including myself, Paris Campbell would be last year. Uh-oh. But uh, <laughs> I, f <laughs> I feel a lot better with that with Jamison Williams based on, you know, the draft capital the uh, the uh, the prospect profile. If he if he didn't have that ACL injury, he would have went ahead of Drake London as the yeah. first receiver taken in the draft. So you add that to an already explosive uh, Lions offense with Amon Ross St. Brown kind of working as that uh that that slot guy. So now you get Jamison Williams in here. It's all systems go. How about this bounce back one? Darren Waller makes the love list, and for Waller. You take away the injuries. We know what he can do on the field. And, Barry, it has to be also that for the Giants, they need a big-bodied pass catcher out there with all these smaller receivers around They do, them. and it feels like the Giants have signed every single wide receiver out there. Like, they have every 400. Slot. Every <laughs> I mean, it's yes. unbelievable. But the fact is, is none of them are Darren Waller. It's injuries have, have derailed in the last couple of years. But last season, Daniel Jones targeted crossing routes at the third highest rate. So, I think – when you think about sort of his skill set, where, where Daniel Jones is comfortable throwing the ball, which is the middle of the field, and especially on those crossing mm -hmm. routes, which is Waller is so good. He's such a night, he's such a matchup nightmare that I think Brian Dayball, who's such a creative play caller, will have a lot of fun having a big body like Darren Waller. So he he upgrades because he goes he he makes the love list because he goes to 
I think a quarterback that might be more suited for him, a better play caller, honestly, and less competition for yes. targets. Like he's in, he was in Las Vegas with Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro on a run first team. And so now he goes, yes, they have Saquon, but the fact of the matter is I'm not worried about Sterling Shepard or Richie James or, you know, Darius Slayton My or man, Isaiah Hodgins. Isaiah Hodgins. Like, I, again, like, it's just like, you know, lot, they have a lot of guys there and we'll see sort of who emerges for the Giants, but it feels like Darren Waller has a chance to be the focal point of this passing offense the way that yeah. Mark Andrews is, the way that Travis Kelsey is, the way that where there are some tight ends that are the focal point of their team's passing offense. I think Waller has that opportunity potentially. Moving over to the hate list for pass catchers, and Jay, this one's kind of easy. Tom Brady retires. The Bucks seem content rolling forward uh, with Kyle Trask or giving him opportunity. Not the best news for Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Yeah, as much as Tom Brady apparently doesn't like my content, uh, I do think he is a very good quarterback and good at what he does uh, and better than Baker Mayfield. I think it's a huge red flag for Baker Mayfield that Sam Darnold looks so good in Carolina by comparison when he came in. Because you, you could just throw it all out and be like, oh, it's Carolina, it's a disaster. It's like, oh, no, Darnold was actually pretty good. Why weren't you that good, Baker? And so now, I, I, Godwin's and Evans, are they even going to be on the team necessarily? I think that's in a little bit of flux. Uh, and certainly Baker, with how poorly he played in Carolina, and yeah, he was a little bit better on the Rams, even though much around him, so I can't really judge that too much, but yeah, we'll certainly a huge, a huge downgrade um, for those receivers. Lawrence, earlier you talked about the Odell Beckham sweepstakes, and that could impact somebody like Alan Lazard that makes the hate list. We know Garrett Wilson is there. Yes, Elijah Moore out, but if Odell goes to the Jets, Lazard is kind of somebody that maybe falls to third or fourth in the pecking order of targets, even if Aaron Rodgers is there. Yeah, well, with Lazard, we kind of – I, I, no matter what happens at the end of the day, I expect him to have his same role that he's always had. Like just being Aaron Rodgers' best friend on the offense outside of Randall Cobb, he'll be his little buddy, you know what I'm saying? But when he, when Aaron Rodgers wanna win, he know he gonna have to go to Garrett Wilson, potentially Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, maybe Nicole Harmon gets up in there somewhere. They've already said they're going to expand his role from what he had with the Chiefs. So, Alan Lazard will definitely be serviceable from a football standpoint, and he can come up with the, uh, the timely big catch and be clutch. But from a consistent fantasy standpoint, um, I, I wouldn't love it. The, the argument for him last year was he was the only veteran wide receiver, really, and Aaron Rodgers' favorite target. He's not going to be Aaron Rodgers' favorite target in New York. That's going to be Garrett Wilson at a 25% target share last year. Even though Lazard and Rodgers are close personally, the fact is, is that last year when Alan Lazard saw fewer than seven targets, he averaged 9.2 fantasy points per game. Like, he needs his, – his, the argument – the pro Alan Lazard argument is he needs to be the number one, and he's not going to be the number one in New York. You didn't even mention, by the way, like they still have Corey Davis on the roster, yeah. right? And we expect Brees Hall to be back, and he'll be involved in the passing game. Yep. Like, I just, you know, I, I Conklin agree. Conklin steals targets. Right, exactly. It's right? crazy. I mean, yeah, so I just, you know, I'm with you, Lawrence. Like, a, a better NFL player than fantasy move for yeah. Alan Lazard. And it's always kind of been like that for him. Like, we, we don't be like, oh, Alan Lazard is bad. It's just that nobody started with fantasy. Yep. Barry, how about this one? Darnell Mooney, the sure. Bears, it seems like things are starting to trend in the right direction for the improvement of this offense. But is it just that the wide receiver room all of a sudden looks a little more crowded considering the bare bones it was last year? Yeah, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is, you know, look, um, uh, Darnell Mooney has had a 26% target share over the last two seasons, and yet last year was wide receiver 57 on a points per game basis. Like, you know, DJ Moore over that same time frame last two years, 28% target share. So Mooney goes from being the number one now to at best the number two we don't know how they feel about chase claypool there's a chance that mooney is number three and by the way there's a chance that in terms of the passing game he's actually number four after cole Komet because they really like Komet as well and so is that are the targets going to be there i feel like darnell mooney is going to be a guy that they're going to take some deep shots to and when he hits on those like he'll have a big game but he's going to be really kind of a touchdown dependent deep threat which will mm -hmm. be nice for justin fields but on an offense that's still probably going to, you know, that'll go through Justin Fields' legs more often than not, it's hard to get excited about Darnell Mooney. Again, when you, when you get somebody like DJ Moore, DJ Moore is going to command yeah. 10 targets a game. Jay, the last one on the hate list, uh, Dalton Schultz goes from the Cowboys offense to the Texans offense. We don't know who's going to be under center for the Texans offense yet, but we do know that it's probably going to be a little bit of a work in progress no matter who the rookie quarterback is. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a concern because Schultz had such an amazing rapport with Dak Prescott. And then when we saw him with Cooper Rush, it just wasn't there. And just being in that high octane offense where he was getting uh, very healthy usage to now going to obviously a much worse offense with more role uncertainty. And look, there's not going to be that many guys competing with him for uh, targets. Guys like Nico Collins and John Mechie, Robert Woods. But at the same time, just having no idea who the quarterback is going to be. Like if it's Bryce Young, sure, but it could also potentially be, you know, Anthony Richardson or something, then just who knows? It's a really important point because Bryce Young, incredible middle of the field thrower. So if you insert him into that offense and you feel good about Schultz's role, anyone else, it's going to be a little questionable.